So now as we continue our look at the anatomical features and functions uh, of the endocrine system, we're going to be now looking at the second part of the pituitary gland. So this will be pituitary gland part two, and this will be focusing on the anterior lobe of the pituitary. So we'll call this the anterior pituitary. And here what we have to mention first and foremost is that the anterior pituitary as opposed to the posterior pituitary is actually involved in production. It does produce hormones. Okay, so it does produce hormones here. Take a look at 45.15, that is figure 45.15, in order to look at the visual representation of the anterior pituitary and the hormones associated with it. So we have production here, and in the posterior pituitary, we only had secretion. So that's a big difference. And for that reason, we can call the anterior pituitary a classic endocrine gland because it's actually going to be involved in the production and in the release, in the secretion of several different hormones. Now, before we get into those hormones, what we have to understand is the hypothalamic relationship between the anterior pituitary and the hypothalamus. Both go hand in hand. They work very, very close together. And this is because every single anterior pituitary hormone, whatever it may be, is controlled by, it is regulated by one uh, releasing hormone or even sometimes inhibiting hormone and that's from the hypothalamus. Don't forget that. The hypothalamus is what is going to produce, so hypothalamus produces both these hormones and also secretes both of these hormones. When it secretes releasing hormone or inhibiting hormone that's going to travel via the portal vein to the anterior pituitary and tell the anterior pituitary, hey, either make something, releasing hormone, or hey, stop making something, inhibiting hormone. So again, hypothalamus is the boss telling the anterior pituitary, hey, you're my best employee, I need you to either do this or do that, and the anterior pituitary should listen. Now, what is this or that? What is the function that the anterior pituitary will be doing? That, that function is production of hormones. So we're going to now be looking at the hormones that are produced by the anterior pituitary. And there are several of them. So hormones produced and also I would say secreted. So the hormones produced in the anterior pituitary can be either considered tropic or non-tropic. So let's look at that idea. There are going to be tropic hormones and what we call tropic hormones, or consider I should say tropic hormones, are any hormones that are going to be involved in the following. Tropic hormones stimulates another endocrine gland. They're going to be essentially hormones that are part of a larger endocrine pathway in which we have a message from the hypothalamus, like a releasing message or an inhibiting message, going to the anterior pituitary. The anterior pituitary then making a hormone called the tropic hormone that makes another message that goes to a different endocrine gland later on, as we'll see. Essentially, the examples of this are plentiful. We have things like thyroid stimulating hormone, which we'll talk about when we get to it. We also have AC. TH, which stands for adrenocorticotropic hormone, which we'll also get to. And also, and this will be in the reproduction lectures, uh, we have gonadotropic hormone being released by the anterior pituitary, not gonadotropic, tropic, gonadotropic hormone being released and produced by the anterior pituitary and the classic examples are LH which stands for luteinizing hormone and FSH which stands for follicle stimulating hormone. Again the big idea here is that you're going to have a tropic hormone being produced by the anterior pituitary. A tropic hormone is produced by one endocrine gland and it's then going to be stimulated and it's produced by one endocrine gland that goes on to stimulate another endocrine gland. That's basically what we would consider tropic hormone. Produced by one, stimulates another. That's what's happening here. Um, and we'll see where the stimulation is happening as we move forward. And this is in contrast to non-tropic. 
Non-tropic hormones aren't as complex because they're not going to be stimulating another endocrine gland. They'll just be doing a, a function, a message that's going to be necessary. Non-tropic hormones include PRL, which stands for prolactin, and also MSH, which stands for melanocyte stimulating hormone. And in addition, there's also going to be hormones that sometimes have a combinatorial effect, both tropic and non-tropic effects. And the classic example of this would be growth hormone, which I'll write out here, but from this point forward will just be known as GH. And of course, I wrote it out here because GH is also the same thing as gonadotropic hormone, so I wanted to make sure we separated them um, as they are different types of hormones altogether. So this growth hormone, which we'll get back to, is both tropic and non-tropic, depending on its function and where it's released. And overall, what I want you to understand about the idea of the pituitary gland is the following. This is the take-home message of the pituitary gland. The pituitary gland follows something called, and you can write this on the side, a hormone cascade or is a part of a hormone cascade pathway. And this is what we imagine in a hormone cascade pathway. What we have is a sort of king gland called the hypothalamus that then is going to influence the anterior pituitary, let's say, and then the anterior pituitary will go on to influence maybe a different endocrine gland, let's say it's a tropic hormone, and then that endocrine gland will then release a different hormone that will then reach finally a target tissue. This is quite confusing and quite complex. Why? Because it's a cascade pathway. You have one cascade, another one, another one, another one, all giving you this final sort of pathway of hormone that's going to be all at the hypothalamic start and then finally reaching a target tissue which will hopefully give us a correct metabolic, physiological, whatever response that's necessary for the body. And that covers our look at the pituitary gland. We're now going to be shifting gears and looking at different levels of hormonal growth regulation, looking at growth hormone in a little bit more detail.